робочий день українського. We are starting the working day in the UCMC. Today we'll be talking about the results of the training on uh, uh, come back. Um, come back. Our uh, guest, Ivona Kastina, deputy head of the NGO Pobratime, Artem Denisov, head of the NGO Pobratime, participants of the second group of um, uh, training, Solodila Vyatkina Mamantov. So the floor is given to Ivona. Good afternoon. Thank you for uh, the opportunity provided to us by the UCMC. We like it here. This is not our first time here. Thank you all who are with us today. I'm uh, pleased to see you and uh, I will briefly tell you about what the organization is doing. Most of the briefing will be dedicated to the briefing on combating, uh, on recovery from traumas and post-traumatic stress disorder using a body dynamic system. So we will tell about the training and then I will give the floor to participants of the training. Besides training, we are working on some lectures. We regularly go to uh, different towns of Ukraine. We le lecture there for the veterans uh, who have not been uh, uh, rehabilitated, who do not have any experience in rehabilitation. We work with volunteers who are in the zone and who have their own experience. Because what we see, we see that every person who was at war, depending on the functions they executed, saw a different picture and had uh, uh, his or her own uh, experience. So our work is based on the principle uh, uh, the um, uh, veteran working with other veterans and uh, the um, uh, participant of ATO is working with another participant of ATO. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, as to the training itself, uh, the main idea of the uh, training is uh, to provide the instruments, the practical skills and theoretical knowledge to the guys uh, how to work with your own uh, trauma or your own shock, how to use uh, your experience so that it becomes the resource for other guys so that they can uh, support people with a similar experience. The main idea is for our training, we do not need uh, any special education. We do not give any academic special knowledge that will help you work at the university or the institute. We provide practical knowledge and uh, maybe some body skills so that a person can work with his or her own trauma and then such person can use this experience to help others and to find uh, contact with uh, such people. Why it is so important is uh, when uh, a psychologist without any knowledge of uh, specific features of uh, warfare trauma, without when the such psychologists did not participate in the warfare, very often for such a psychologist it took very long time to establish a contact. Sometimes they failed to establish contact with the, the patients. And uh, we realized that we need to change approach, and thanks to DT Marcher, we found this system in the context of body dynamic, and that's based on the pre principle 
peer um, uh, exchange or equal to equal um, Pavlo Mamontov. Good afternoon. I would like to talk about this principle equal to equal. This is the basic instrument which helps understand uh, another person and it's easier for another person to understand you. It helps understand. It helps you to get into somebody other's shoes. When ATO participants return from ATO zone, they do not understand why people smile here, why people go to restaurants here, because such people, these, these people, uh, they live in different worlds. And to get these worlds united for that, we need to, uh, that one side understands uh, another. That's at least my interpretation of what it is. An important aspect is when the uh, military get together, we select them according to a certain criteria. Not any military can participate in the training. Anyone can submit the um, can submit, but then we uh, select groups uh, where we include people for, with, uh, from different uh, parts of the front line of ATO. The only common thing between them is that they all participated in ATO. And this way we form a new group of trust. It's much easier to, to create your safe environment in such a group, and that is very important for any person in the 21st century. And according to these principles, we are trying to create teams and uh, we develop all our approaches according to that. All participants of the training will work with their uh, comrades in arms in the units from where they came to us. Now, Alina uh, can tell us what were you doing before the war and how you got to the training. Good afternoon. Basically, my story started two and a half years ago when I studied uh, in Kiev, when my dance started. I was there from the first days. Then I was involved in volunteer activities. I was uh, raising money and uh, bringing them to ATO zone. Uh, during one of such trips, I uh, got to Piski and uh, I spent seven months in Piski and one rotation in Shirokino. When I came back, there were two things. Uh, uh, first was that uh, everyone sees uh, uh, it's like uh, written on your forehead that you are abnormal. And then you understand that you need some time to understand who you are, what you are, and the socium tells you you have to work, to study, and you don't have time for yourself. And then when five months passed after I returned, I reached the maximum amplitude of emotional uh, um, change, and then I met uh, the comrade in arms, I uh, got into environment where people understand me, where I do not believe, where I do not feel myself abnormal. And what I learned is how to find resource to build my life here. And this should be the life to which I would like to come back from war. Uh, we, many of us, are in the situation when we are stuck between the war and civil life, because here there's nowhere 
to return. And I would like to thank Comrade in Arms for that. I am planning to come back to Kiev to continue work with them and to support the guys who are trying to return to civil life. Uh, thank you, Igor Kaladila. I asked to tell us about where you came from and tell you in your own words about training. Firstly, I would like to say that I continue my service and this is the final stage of my service. Medical service of Kulchitsky Battalion, one of the first volunteer battalions that was formed right after Maidan. The worst started for me in the autumn 20, uh, 2014. I was a successful person before the war, and my decision to go to war was unexpected for my, uh, my relatives, and uh, it was shocking to them. But I would like to say that any program it, uh, they should say that there should be some assessment of the effectiveness of the program, and I found how to assess this program, and uh, the reason is we are all different, and uh, it is evident when you meet your counterparts, we are different. Uh, um, in social uh, levels and other things, but the only thing that unites us is that we were war. And uh, secondly, the program helped me to return from war. This is the final point for me. I returned home, and for me, this is the evaluation of this program. And, uh, how did I get in this program? This was unexpectedly for me. I thought about it in autumn 2015. Many people asked me, because I am a specialist in technical medicine, uh, we worked with servicemen, and um, of course there is People address uh, to me with different problems, with other issues, how it really happens in life. And I understood that when they are on the holidays and they, they return, they are different, and the reaction is opposite to what was expected. They had to get some support, some inspiration from being on holiday, but I see different reaction, and that's why I thought that something is going on with these people, and I tried to find a way. And when uh, I had some disturbances, I, uh, I met this wonderful girl, and she said uh, the training is, uh, will start in several days, and you should come and be a participant. And I opened another sphere in the global sense. I understood. Firstly, I understood the scope of the problem, and I understood that there is an instrument, and there is a light in the end of the tunnel, and the main instrument is the principle equal to equal and peer to peer, and uh, if you are a professional psychologist and you know that for military, for servicemen, a psychologist, uh, it, uh, this word sounds awkward. If they say that you need document from psychologist, they think that they are placed in some category of people. And, uh, we understood that we should work in this direction, and this is inspiring for us. Thank you. Artyom. I would like to add, we are speaking about training a lot, and I would like to clarify something. So the training is a part of the whole process. We are not only conducting trainings and accumulate and gather people, and uh, uh, so the training in itself um, 
veterans take part in this training, and people with second group, two servicemen worked with them who uh, underwent training during the first stage of the training, and we uh, start uh, the third group, and in this group uh, there will be instructors uh, that uh, were the participants of the first and second group. And also we hold lectures in the ETO area and we invite people who underwent our training and we provide the opportunity to our guys to share the experience and also we conduct trainings in some towns with the volunteers and with the servicemen. And, uh, we face the situation that we should separate the target groups because work experience is different among volunteers, families who were at home, and uh, servicemen who were at the front line. So these are different experiences, so we should work with them separately, and we invite different instructors to carry out training. And I can speak with volunteers because I know the sphere. And, uh, I have experience in this, I know it, and uh, we attract people in order that they work with uh, guys in hospitals or in uh, different veteran organizations because they have experience in a similar sphere. And uh, the aim of this is to build Okay, let's say the large um, scope, uh, the network of uh, support among veterans. The veterans, they should know that they have people uh, whom, uh, who support them and support. Uh, so maybe some uh, uh, some support uh, without borders. So no matter in what war you took part, we had experience uh, um, uh, veterans who uh, were at war in Iraq, and they have similar problems. And. Uh, for us, for Ukrainians, this is an opportunity to become stronger, to provide support, and to initiate the cooperation and support among different countries because we have experience and uh, the main question is how we are going to use this experience. I would like to tell you about experience in an in international arena. We faced the fact that veteran, the word veteran, uh, we had the uh, 9th of May. Uh, first association is an elderly person decorated with some uh, words and uh, um, that people we saw on the 9th of May celebrating uh, the Day of Victory. And now we have veterans who are 19, 20, 25. And there are veterans, not only in Ukraine, in America, and there are people of 40, 30, 20, 25 years of age. And this is a different picture. And also, we didn't have understanding how to name these things, how to identify the um, problem. We didn't face war on our territory. We didn't know that veterans can be uh, so young. Of course, we remember that veterans returned from Afghanistan, but uh, the society closed its eyes on the veterans, and they tried to forget about this problem. And now we created a picture subconsciously uh, without uh, knowing it and uh, we uh, have false associations and we hear uh, on the, in the media that uh, uh, they say about veterans and they use words such as alcoholism, uh, drug addiction, some suicide uh, ideas and uh, but uh, this is uh, this association is wrong because people who are here with me they are strong uh, they had forced to come uh, to us uh, and to take part in our training they understood that they had 
experience that is unique, and this unique experience needs understanding. They have to learn how to live with this. This is a very valuable experience, and many civilians, they don't have this experience, but this experience can, can be very useful in peaceful life. And uh, these people, they have the opportunity to work with this, and this uh, I respect people like them, uh, and uh, if we are speaking about the problem in peer to peer, uh, we use this because uh, when a person has experience, so they have special attitude. We respect one another. Uh, um, the, uh, we cannot help veterans. For me, I cannot help any person. I can support. I can provide instruments that I have. I can uh, give some experience, but we as an organization can only support and create an example, maybe because this can happen to a person's life. But all uh, the work is done by the veterans. And this is an example. All these people are example. They underwent five days of lectures and half a year of process, difficult process, when they changed the attitude towards themselves. And they understood the processes that were during this half, half a year. So the reality changed. changed and uh, we couldn't even understand that we ha uh, obtained some superpowers in the course of this processing. These are like mental uh, muscles. And uh, in the media and in our communication, we should show example, the image that this is possible, that veterans, they look like this, and this is normal, and it's cool. And uh, this is a subculture that will show example because these people can lead the other people and this is a unique value in the mod modern world. And I would like to ask Pavel about his experience and I would like to hear about your background and your participation in the training. Thank you. I will start from far away. From school times, I was interested in different patriotic movements, history, literature. Then Maidans, Orange Maidan, I was helping being a school boy, but at this Maidan, we uh, got uh, into a trap uh, when we were beaten by Berkut, and then when all these green men appeared, I found out that the friends from my sports uh, section, from box section, were liberating Mariupol, and I uh, got interested uh, in that, and uh, we, uh, I uh, signed up with this unit, and I went to war. That was a long process. There was a lot of bureaucracy. We were going from one agency to another. They would lost our contracts four times officially. I was there before I was wounded, just maybe eight days only, officially. And I went to Azov uh, regiment. Then how did I get to Pobratims, uh, to this program? Uh, I did not know whether I wanted to get assistance. I uh, came more to get knowledge when I was uh, attending the courses, I realized that there should be assistance uh, provided to everyone because not uh, because people may have stress not just uh, because of the war, many have stresses uh, from uh, the childhood. That's quite an abstract notion, who needs it, who doesn't need it. And, uh, I got very much interested in all these processes and all these trainings and in atmosphere. It's difficult to uh, talk just about some lessons to remind what information was given at this or that class. 
That's just the feeling, the emotions and the knowledge. This is not like some course, you are just among people who are similar to you. And I understand that we are now moved from the status of people who require assistance to the status of people who can give assistance. And, uh, and these are um, people who will go to their units, to their regiments, and they will help there, and they will invite trainers. And they will be organizing courses there, because if just trainers go there and say come to, to the courses, even those who want, even those who want will not go. But uh, as it has been mentioned already, when they tell a person go to some psychological course, you're perceived as an abnormal person. And uh, then, uh, but there will be uh, the people who will be able to say uh, everything's uh, normal, that's not some type of a sect. Uh, uh, it will be much easier to find contact with the warriors. So we were trying to hide our plans, but all of them were disclosed. As we've mentioned, the training is just one of the projects. It's a basic project. That's a place where people go, those people who want to get more knowledge, who want to learn how to support uh, their uh, brothers in arms or comrades in arms. We can talk about uh, media coverage, about state programs, non-state programs that all exist. We are not just one unique organization. We help form uh, the approach to social adaptation of veterans in Ukraine. There are several organizations like that. That's a long process. It may take several years. We need to be ready to that. It's not a toy for one year. It's not something to what you can devo devote a year or half a year of your time. This is the work uh, that you can uh, uh, get engaged into because you feel uh, so. That work will take 10, 15 years. In future, we need to create systems which will stay respective of who works there. Definitely, it will always be based on those who have this wartime experience those who uh, were um, attending the first trainings. But in 10, 15 years, we want to see the country where this system is uh, merged with the state system. Now the state uh, drafts laws. They are developing the system of social adaptation of military. We are trying to provide, uh, to give advice to the state, but I hope that uh, sooner or later we'll be able to say that the state supports uh, uh, NGOs. The real work uh, uh, is going on in small groups, in the atmosphere, uh, unique atmosphere. And that is possible only in uh, the uh, civil society. Military from the US, from uh, the Netherlands, Denmark come to us, and they come here to learn. Finally, Ukraine is at the stage when uh, others uh, come here to learn. 
we can conduct a scientific discussion with the world. This topic has been uh, uh, studied in the world for 20, 25 years only. There's no ideal system of social adaptation in the world. We now have a chance to make a great contribution into that. And what's happening in civil society is developing the new approach to social adaptation of military. What's happening in our organization with other, in other organizations is what will be examined and studied globally. So the task of the state is to support this experiment. We hope that this year we will establish an active dialogue with representatives of state bodies, because only in such cooperation we can talk about effective, efficient programs. Do you have anything else to add? I would like to add one more thing. We are not against psychologists, especially military psychologists. I myself am the military psychologist, but we want to explain that the veteran, I'm addressing my colleagues, the veteran, the person who integrated his or her own experience could become for you a key to find contact with the warrior. We need to work in pairs. We are not saying that those guys who attended the trainings can work with any type of psychological traumatization. That would be not true. That, that would be true. But these are people who, together with you, with the psychologist, could uh, become very valuable. If you work as tandem, then uh, you will be 70-80% more efficient from the first day. You will not have to spend time, to waste time to prove that you are not this cliché type of psychologist. I was uh, in uh, the armed forces, and I know when you have to take the psychological test, it's really difficult. We're not saying that we do not need psychologists. We need them, and your role is to be uh, to, to work together with the veteran. I believe that uh, I did not uh, 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 I, I, I explain I, I just want to add to what Ivona started from about the scale of the program the person changes from the inside. There are words that people very often do not understand. Alina understands it correctly. She smiles and she understands what I'm talking about. I'm absolutely sure that such programs, this program can globally be the instrument to build a safer society in Ukraine. And this um, the big picture is composed of small elements, what Artem and Pavlo mentioned. Pavlo was using the word help. That's the word that the society understands. But in the program, we change our view and we avoid this word. 
We use it now for you to understand it, but we avoid, uh, instead of the word uh, help, the word support. And it's important, because when we are talking about help, it's some um, compassion, we are sorry for someone, and that is what most of the volunteers and psychologists are doing. They are trying to help instead of support. When we are talking about help, and there's no place for respect. But the veterans, the warriors, the people who uh, need respect, not the pity. The pity is a negative thing for them, and it forms the wrong attitude of people to them. And then from, uh, well, uh, believing that uh, first uh, they, they, they perceive these people as heroes and then as abnormal people. But based on the right knowledge, we need to work according to the principle equal to equal. We need to support each other. We will not be able to replace psychologists. We do not have uh, any academic background. But we are the key that allows to open the door. For me to establish contact with my comrade in arms, for that I need uh, this much. I will ask where he fought, uh, and that's enough to start a discussion for psychologists. It may take weeks, or it will never happen. And when you start understanding it, it's then easy to uh, know where to go further. We have a basic understanding of who wants to work where, and it's not about you have to do something. You find your place in the program and in your future life. Thank you. And uh, I uh, will try to sum up today. We were speaking about the second stage of training, uh, about uh, the way to overcome post-traumatic stress disorder, and uh, also we discussed the uh, body dynamic system and the use of the system, and we are going to start uh, that session. And uh, the uh, detailed information can be found on our page, and where uh, there you can get also application form to get uh, to be a participant and also we will have a program for uh, children of servicemen and this information uh, will be provided on on the site and the group uh, will be also peer to peer system and we uh, try to find children whose parents served native area and each group has its unique experience of war and children also have their own experience please follow our page if you have some questions please ask so now questions good afternoon I was the participant of military actions in Yugoslavia, and uh, uh, from all the programs I heard of, uh, your program uh, is valuable, and uh, in Kiev uh, was Pizza Veterana was open in Kiev, and uh, we invited them here in our center, and I believe that this is a unique experience. Do you plan uh, to come to them and uh, to see what is going there in practice and how the veterans are rehabilitated? Because Pizza Veterano is the experience, practical experience, where ETU participants are rehabilitated to normal uh, life. And we are great fans of Pizza Veterano and uh, we uh, conduct our meetings there. 
and this is an example of good social adaptation and responsibility for the lives of people. And maybe John will tell us about it. I would like to cite our colleague, who is uh, uh, who is now on a trip. Uh, uh, Andrei Kazinchuk, uh, he formulated it like this. Guys uh, who created Pizza Veterano, they uh, reached what many organizations tried to reach. They uh, showed that veterans is a sign of qu quality. People have military experience and uh, they make quality pizza and uh, this is a this is a place that, that is adopted where you come to get tasty pizza, night service and atmosphere and uh, they made a quality product and we should share this experience and veterans, they have unique experience and they can use this experience, this energy and they can create really great projects and we want to support these projects in different ways by providing contacts and uh, also to provide moral and psychological support to them. And uh, we should do things together because it is more efficient than doing it by yourself. And uh, if we are speaking about Pizza Veterano, I deeply respect these guys because everything there is of quality. One more question. Uh, Leonidas Stalcev, I gave him an idea and he supported it. Really, some uh, labels should be created that veterans work there, and uh, this is not just labeling, but also the attitude of people towards these veterans. Do you have some uh, contacts? Do you not have some ideas about it, about these novelties in business? So this is a broad issue and we can even conduct another press conference on this matter and this is one of the projects our organization works on and we believe that all the people who were at war who were in the EU area whether these are veterans or volunteers when they come home as Alina said uh, that uh, uh, there is an inscription in there for it that they are abnormal and uh, they feel uh, this way and uh, we don't have something to identify yourself uh, with. So uh, when you are in ATO area, you are a volunteer, you are a serviceman, or you bring some uh, things to the, uh, to the front line and you identify yourself with some sector, with some group of people, and when you return, you are by yourself, you do not belong to a unit. If you are demobilized, you can come, but you are not a participant, you do not belong to volunteers if you decide to stop volunteering and to to get involved in other matters and uh, your vector of your life is different and it's not only about business business is only one uh, direction of this uh, process and um, uh, maybe this is a creation of some subculture a person wants to belong uh, to society, not only at the level of Ukraine, business of Ukraine, but um, at the level of young participants around the world, maybe some uh, of the younger generation, of older generation. Uh, but uh, uh, you remember that we had picture after the Second World War, and now it is different. And uh, I won't speak about uh, it on the whole, but maybe we will provide these ideas and we will discuss these matters with Pizza Veterano and other projects. And one more important thing, in your first question, maybe uh, people didn't pay attention to this, but, uh, and I'm grateful to you for this question, you uh, said that you're a Balkan veteran and this project. Of course, we love Pizza Veterano, 
And I would like to stress that the matter is this project gives clear understanding that uh, no matter where you uh, were in the on the battlefield, uh, in the battlefield, and uh, no matter what your religion is, but we have the slow the war experience, and uh, we met in Krivirig in a group, and there was a man, elderly man, who uh, also took part in military actions in the Balkans, and he was an instructor, and he took part in the work with us, and he said, "Oh my God, uh, I didn't understand this matters for years." Is. So this is the assessment and the evaluation of the project, that it, this is really important. There are forgotten problems, they, by, but they didn't disappear. And this program helps to work in this direction. And of course, I'm convinced that we will support Pizza Veterano, and they have really tasty pizza. Any other questions? My first question will be to Ivona. That's on your international cooperation. It's too early to talk about network, network of veterans from all over the world, but are you planning to organize some conference for veterans uh, from different countries of the world. Thank you for your question. It's very important. We were in the front, we got to Brigade 92, and I saw how veterans of the American Army and our veterans were playing tennis. For me, it was an indicator of why I am doing it, why I believe it is important. The veteran from the U.S. was brought up uh, on principles of the Cold War, and he played tennis with his former potential enemies. And that demonstrates how the 21st century opens up the opportunity for dialogue. Нам відкрилися можливості до безмежної комунікації і пізнання світів один одного. І для мене це настільки круто, і це настільки показово. Це так само, як коли ми в Данії з тим самим нашим колегою, який все ще їде з Дніпропетровськ, були в будинку ветеранів і за 10 хвилин знайшли сотні тем, на які поговорити з ветеранами Балкан в Данії, з якими у нас ну, навіть мови спільної немає, вербальної. Але виявилося, що ми маємо спільні спогади, дуже схожі кадри з, з нашого минулого. І тому, говорячи про саме мережу, це не настільки далекоглядний проект, яким він може здатися. Він формується на ось таких звичайних людських зв'язках, на звичайних людських знайомствах. І коли приїжджає сюди ветеран, я, наприклад, намагаюся завжди його привезти кудись от, іноземців до наших ветеранів, знайомити їх. Тому що на цьому рівні формується ця комунікація. Такі організації не формуються зверху. Ми не приїдемо до великих організацій ветеранських Америці і не скажемо, все, тепер ми з вами об'єднані. Ну, ми можемо, звісно. У нас так робили кілька організацій минулих війн, нічого з цього не вийшло. Все виходить на рівні простої комунікації. Ми плануємо не конференцію, ми плануємо поїздку до Європи. Якщо у нас все вдасться, коли у нас все вдасться, я дуже сподіваюся, що це станеться скоро, то ми поїдемо знайомитися з міжнародними організаціями в ряді європейських країн, такий собі road trip з презентацією наших проєктів, з ознайомленням з їхніми проєктами, тобто це навіть буде більша робоча поїздка, для того, щоб дізнатися, як там це працює, і, зокрема, і познайомитися, тому що тільки познайомившися особисто, ми зможемо насправді сформувати міцну мережу о, по, по світу. Дякую. Я ще доповню просто по поводу... Вот этого момента у нас в первом тренинге у нас на один из этапов приезжал ветеран с Дании, который тоже прошел так, такой же тренинг с тренером Дити Марчер, который она проводила в Дании. И он приехал сюда и полностью принимал участие на протяжении одного из этапов в работе с нашими ребятами. И ну, действительно, просто повторюсь, потому что я это как-то вот для меня это таким большим было инсайтом, что дачане, профессиональная, крутая армия, да, там у них проблема, если у тебя нету тряпочки, чтобы протереть там очки. И мы ему показываем видео там с ДАПа, 
И оказывается, что все равно проблематика по возвращению одна и та же. Неважно, насколько ты там увешан всем снаряжением, неважно, насколько у тебя денег выделяет на тебя государство, проблема остается одна и та же. И это то место, где мы нашли вот с ним контакт. И сейчас вот ребята ездили, собственно, к нему туда в гости, познакомились с тем, как у них это все э, делается. И ну, насчет конференции я не знаю, но то, что расширять круг этот общения, вот такой ветеран с ветераном, ну это да, это одно из таких основных аспектов проектов ну, и целей нашей работы. Ще одне запитання буде до вас. Ви найближчим часом запускаєте нову стадію, скажімо, проєкту, вже третю, і групу цю для дітей. Скажіть, чи потрібні вам якісь, можливо, волонтери, будь-то перекладачі, чи дизайнери, чи ще хто-небудь на якісь організації питання для того, щоб це ставалося більш ефективно і ще краще, ніж у вас виходить зараз? Ну, скажімо так, в залі сьогодні присутня майже вся команда побратимів. Нас досить небагато, але водночас набагато більше, ніж ми могли б собі уявити ще півроку тому. Звісно, ми відкриті до співпраці. Основне, щоб люди поділяли наше бачення цього всього, щоб люди поділяли те, у що ми віримо, те, заради чого ми цим займаємося. Волонтерство заради волонтерства нас уже самих не дуже цікавить, і тому навряд чи така людина зможе перебувати в нашому середовищі. Ми ставимося до цього як до покликання. Ми ставимося до цього як до професійного свого зросту. Це вже не волонтерство. І залишаючись на етапі волонтерства, ми далеко не підемо. Волонтерство має під собою певний, скажімо так, блок для розвитку. Для того, щоб розвиватися, всім організаціям потрібно набирати обертів. Нам потрібно переходити в суспільно корисний бізнес, скажімо так. В усьому світі він існує. Це не державні організації, які працюють на більших масштабах, які набирають обертів, але тому, що вони працюють за саме системами побудови організацій, не волонтерських. І ми зацікавлені в розширенні команди. Ми дуже хочемо, щоб наша команда розширилася. Але ми дуже прискіпливі до того, хто в цю команду війде. І тому ми будемо дуже раді знайомитися, ми будемо дуже раді спробувати намагатися співпрацювати і будемо сподіватися, що все вийде, якщо тим більше такі зацікавлені люди є. Ну, я немножко добавлю. Я, окей, на правах організатора цього всього дійства побратіми, хотів би сказати, що ізначально я дуже благодарен Діті Марчер, нашому головному тренеру, о тому, що вона мені ізначально пояснила одну таку просту штуку, що якщо ти готовий і хочеш 100% віддаватися справу, в якому у тебе є страсть, тобі треба, по крайній мере, закрити питання, що кушати і во що одягатися. Вот. Тому професіонал, який намагається працювати з групою і розуміє, що у нього, так, окей, я тут працюю 5 днів, а потім треба десь гроші знайти, ну, тому що у мене дитина не кормлена. Вот. Тому ізначально, коли я это все начинал делать. Цель моя была в том, чтобы это стало не только страстью, которая дает тебе ресурс моральный, но и также это было оплачиваемой работой для ребят в первую очередь. Для того, чтобы у них не было ну, вопроса типа «Окей, я возвращаюсь, и что?». Ну, вот мы даем возможность, вот это одно из направлений, где вы можете работать, работать и получать за это деньги. Вот. Мы безмерно благодарны благотворительному фонду «Мова добра», который полностью оплатили предыдущий ну, вот, тренинг, поскольку для ребят тренинг абсолютно бесплатный для участников, но мы оплачиваем полностью всю работу всей команды. Вот. Это очень важно для того, чтобы мы, ну, что называется, не легли косьми в процессе. Потому что если мы доносим до ребят вот эту идею, мы должны ее сами поддерживать. Ну, давайте будем честными да, в том, что мы говорим. Поэтому наше намерение для того, чтобы это развивалось, для того, чтобы это строилось, нам надо находить поддержку да, и тот ресурс, который даст возможность уделить этому моменту полностью все свое время. Потому что то, как сказала Ивона, это, ну, это не хобби. Это не то, чем ты занимаешься так, ну, в свободное время. Дякую. Нам тут маякует Валентин, что уже все пора, и 
Тому все пора. Дякую вам дуже за те, що ви нас сьогодні послухали. Якщо ще якісь питання є, ми зараз відповімо off records. І дякую всім учасникам. Побачимося з вами за кілька місяців, коли нам буде ще щось. Андрій Казінчук! Андрій Казінчук!